1938, America was deep into the Great Depression and a lot of Americans were feeling down and out. But one local South Dakota resident wasn't going to let that get him down. Clarence Pappy Howell decided he wanted to host a race called the Black Hills Motor Classic. Pappy ran a local ice business where he would transport ice to all the local residents. However, with the invention of the electric refrigerator, he decided that the writing was on the wall and decided to move on and go all in in the motorcycle world and he purchased the local Indian motorcycle dealership. To create a sense of camaraderie, Pappy also started the motorcycle club called the Jack Pine Gypsies. Pappy and the Jack Pine Gypsies decided that on August 14th, 1938, they were going to host that race, the Black Hills Motor Classic, and they sent out letters inviting all their friends to come out and race. On that day, nine racers showed up ready to compete, and a few hundred fans came to spectate. What originally started as a small little race and stunt show by Pappy back in the late 1930s has now grown into the most notorious, largest motorcycle rally in the world. Sturgis now has grown into what attracts about a half a million visitors around the world every single year to its rally. I was born at morning on the first day of June 1900 and something in two My mom was a sweetheart my father was too They left me a watch and an old pair of shoes 2023 would mark the 83rd annual Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. For years I've wanted to make the ride from Southern California up to Sturgis, South Dakota and experience the rally, but I wanted to do it the right way. I wanted to get a group of guys together that I enjoyed riding with and block out a decent amount of time to really enjoy the ride up there and back and hit all the major hot spots in the Sturgis area. And it turns out this year everything fell into place. I grabbed a couple of guys here from the shop, Andrew and Brandon, a couple of my friends, a couple of YouTubers, Million Dollar Bogan, and a couple of my cousins, Chris and Daniel, coming from Washington and Utah. So we had a rad crew, a bunch of guys coming from different states and different countries. We had Australia represented, we had Germany represented, and we all had one goal in mind, to hit Sturgis, South Dakota for the first time and enjoy the open road on our Harley Davidson motorcycles. I guess I've been lucky to some degree for someone who ate all the food from the tree stars been aligned and my goose hanging high i'll be okay in the sweet by and by i'll be okay in the sweet by and by Starting off here on another adventure. This time we're hitting Sturgis. So pretty pumped about this trip. It's been a long time in the making. We've been planning this thing for a very long time. Got a couple surprises along the way, a couple guests, a couple surprise appearances as well. So this is gonna be a multi-part series here. We just shot up from Southern California. Brandon's over there taking a piss behind the wall. So we are in Barstow right now. We got a really early start. We wanted to try to beat the heat a little bit, beat the traffic as much as we could as well. So we got five riders right now, including myself. We've got me, we've got Brandon. We've got a guest appearance here from Stefan. Stefan flew all the way from Germany to ride with us to Sturgis. What initial thoughts here? It's great. It took six months of preparations. I'm so happy to be here to ride with the crew. Uh, I tried it so many times. I was always refused, but now they finally approved my application. Are you still employed? You still have a job and everything? You didn't have to quit your job? To uh, I would have done it, but uh, I found an agreement with my boss. So he is, he is good with me riding here. And then when I'm back home, I need to redo the work to uh, yeah, do some extra shifts, some extra flights. Uh, what are we on today? We are on the Wilbur's Glide. That's how Ooh. I, yeah. Uh, basically it's a- uh, Who would have thought? Stepping with Wilbur's. Oh, okay. No, just I'm here for Harley Davidson. Okay. <laughs> now it's a street light standard, I think a 21 or 20 model year. And we did some slight modifications, of course, the suspension, but some nice Kahuna grips. And 
some LED lights thanks to Steve from Late Laws for fitting all those extra parts and making the bike ready. Very nice. All right. Well, street bike can't go wrong with that, right? We got Brandon on the Road King, of course, 2017 Road King here. We got Andrew on the Road King as well, 2017 Road King. Yeah, baby. We're in it now. Starting to feel the heat set in, huh? Yeah, a little bit. It's yeah. like, uh, I think it hit like 95, 100 on the way up here. So I think it's about 100 right now. So uh, headed into St. George tonight. We also got Matt here, special guest appearance. He's on the Lowrider S. What year's your bike? Uh, 2020. 2020 Lowrider S. I always like it when we mix it up a little bit with soft tails. We don't have all touring bikes, so it's nice to have a you know a soft tail with us or Dyna. We don't have any Dynas here, but modern soft tail here. Stop tonight. Final destination is St. George. So we'll try to uh, endure the heat here and push through it. second gas stop we just laid down about 130 miles and we're at the terribles just north of like state line in nevada you know we're, we're south of vegas still so we got to ride through vegas and hit st george we stopped off here before if you checked out our north rim video this is like one of the biggest gas stations in the world i think is what they claim it's like 90 pumps or something like that it's about 111 degrees right now so yeah some of us got the hydration vests on it's yeah we're just getting baked down here for sure so we knew this was going to be kind of the hottest stretch of the trip so we're just trying to push through it and uh i just try to make the best of it you ever had a white castle burger before stefan no never should i have one <laughs> it, is it a must it's like the white trash food of america oh okay sounds sounds promising not exactly healthy. Put my head, uh, my helmet in underneath water. Yeah. But not the not the yellow one. Right, yeah. The, the clear the one. The clean water, yeah. yeah. The clean water. All right, let's call find the guys and see what they want to do. You ever been to this big of a gas station before? No. Biggest gas station ever. Is it is it really the biggest I, ever? I think well, I, I think it's the biggest in the world. Yeah. Well, 96 pumps, that's a lot. And it's a lot, yeah. That is a lot. What's wrong with you? No, no, I'm just, I'm just wondering if they know. So this is the new and improved pack. Yeah. You don't know if he's it's pack person. It's pack person. Yeah. Yeah. It's hot over here. Come over here. Hey Stefan, no, no drinking and riding, okay? Ah, uh, okay. Maybe some non-alcoholic? Wait till tonight, right? Yeah, but you know, I'm I'm used to German beer, so yours is just a little bit of purified water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Germans do know some about beer. I feel like I'm in the out. Oh my goodness, this is it, dude. Are we allowed to even be in here? Yeah, yeah, please, yeah, don't lock us in. Are we even allowed to be in here? I have a pretty good rule of like, just go as far as you can until they say like, hey, you're not supposed to be here. It's got me some pretty cool places, you know? <laughs> I like that policy, that's good. Yeah. It will, we were in 110, and now you can see our breath. I thought it would be hotter. Oh, that was great. That was money. Where's Kit Rock when you need it? All right, let me grab some jerky or something. You guys all charged up? All charged up, dude. That's First time ever using it. I bought it for uh, Grand Canyon. There you go. Never got to use it. Let me know so. what you think, man. Yeah, I'll give you a full in-depth review at our next stop.
We were wrestling with two schools of thought when we were planning this leg of the trip. On one hand, I was thinking that we leave late in the afternoon, so we go through the hottest part of the desert, through Vegas, and end up in St. George. When the sun has already gone down, it's only about 90 degrees. And the other school of thought that we went with was leave early in the morning and try to beat all the traffic and just zip out there as quickly as we could, and maybe only go through 115 part of the time. I can't really say which one was better. We definitely hit some really hot temperatures, but I will say we ended up arriving in St. George a lot sooner than we would otherwise, which was kind of nice to get the relaxation once we got there. We finally made it into Las Vegas. By the time we hit Vegas, the temperatures had reached 120 degrees. We started to hit some traffic at one point where it's literally stop and go. The boys and I decided to instigate California rules and we started splitting lanes and going up. The locals didn't seem too pleased about that, but it got us through a little bit quicker and it cut our time heading into Mesquite by a little bit. degrees right now we're in mesquite we're about 60 miles away from our destination right now yeah this is probably hopefully the worst part of our trip right here um because yeah it's blazing 120 is like no joke so yeah fill up with gas right now head into saint george eat some chicken we've got a place called viva the chicken i think that's what it's called hit the pool so we'll see how it's going my hydration vest helped for about an hour but yeah, we're, this is probably the hottest weather I've ever ridden in before. Have you guys ever ridden in 120 degrees before? Probably the hottest. Not riding, but in the river, yeah. Riding, this is probably my hottest. I would uh, like to make a statement about the street lights. Okay, make a quick statement. Okay, it's a lovely bike. I never had so much wind protection and I never needed it less. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you used to the road glide? You think this gives you more wind protection yeah. than the road glide? Especially with the aftermarket uh, windscreen. I, I hardly get any wind, so I'm dying. But it's a nice bike, so without any modifications, uh, well, uh, handlebar-wise and seat-wise, it's good. The streak light gives you a little bit better wind protection. You know, guys, everyone that calls the shark nose fairing the wind splitter, I, I just, I don't know guys. I think the, I agree with these guys. The street glide, you deflect the wind better. It's closer to you, you have a little bit more of a, a bubble. You get a little bit more headway on the road glide. But anyways. It's 120 degrees here in Mesquite, Nevada. And uh, we're at a gas station. And we need to rehydrate our cooling vests. There's a water spigot right there. Do you mind if I borrow that hose just to wet myself to get back on the bike? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, sir. This is the part of the YouTube video where things start to get a little weird. It's best not to ask questions when you're on the road. So we're gonna make the best of it. It's 120. We now got our air conditioning. It's only about what? 49 miles, 50 miles to St. George. And then we're uh, relaxing poolside. 
Yeah. Bike's holding up good so far. It's always like a little nerve wracking when you're running the engine hard at 120 degrees outside. Like I just feel like it's just getting really hot, but yeah, good old Betsy. My Milwaukee 8 on my 2018's never failed me yet. So yeah, it's running strong. I just had a fresh service with all the synthetic fluids. So that helps out as well. I'm gonna run in here and fill up the Yeti here and then move on into St. George here real quick. Beer caves. Beer cave? Love beer caves. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, yes. 20 degrees in here, it feels so good. So when we get to Sturgis, you know, we're staying there. We got a place we're staying there for about a week and we're gonna hit up like all the hot spots all around Sturgis, so like Devil's Tower. We're gonna try to hit up the Badlands. We're gonna go all through the Black Hills, Had to hit up Mount Rushmore, Spearfish Canyon. So we're gonna try to do all the, the best, most notorious, like iconic places in Sturgis. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't done any of those rides before, so this is gonna be rad. Move down the water. Rehydrating. Yeah. Oh. Can I taste? Yeah, you want some? It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Just enjoying the 120 degree weather out here in the lovely town of Mesquite. So even though we were warned by three people to get off on Pioneer because of all the construction right before the gorge going through Arizona, Andrew, Brandon, and Matt still managed to miss the exit. But Stefan and I were able to make the exit and pass a lot of this standstill traffic that was leading up to the gorge. And the side road was actually kind of scenic as well, so that's always an added benefit. They beat us here, I don't know how they beat us. Well, I do know actually, they were splitting lanes in Arizona. By following the law, Matt, that's how we beat me. We followed the directions, not a single law was broken, and we still managed to just beat you guys. You know, we're just that fast. They're just good at what they do, you know? I, I can't explain it, they just know what, they just know how to ride. So me and Stefan, uh, we had a little bit more of a, a legal ride. Yeah. And uh, we got here 
slightly after them, so it's all good. I'm totally against those illegal highway uh, lane splitting stuff, and we found such a marvelous piece of road. I still got goosebumps uh, from the road, even though it was uh, 120 degrees weather. It was a nice road. Uh, speaking of splitting lanes, though, Stefan, I saw you splitting in Las Vegas. You know you can't split in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, but uh, they will send the ticket to Wilbur's USA. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, there was a guy like pissed off at us, like honking and stuff. Yeah. Well, there was a guy that wouldn't let you buy, right? That was a guy that rode a Jeep, uh, that, that was driving a Jeep. And I thought Jeep guys are good guys, as I'm riding a Jeep Wrangler as well. But there are some exemptions, I have to say. Yeah, that Jeep guy was kind of a jerk, man. Yeah. Maybe, that was maybe he rented it. Yeah, it was a rental for sure. Yeah, that guy was trying to sideswipe you and take you out. Uh, we're here at Viva Chicken now, so this is kind of one of our favorite spots to come in St. George. After a long, hot run through the desert, we finally made it to our hotel in St. George, Utah. And the pool was definitely calling our names. So we cooled off a bit, got a little R&R, &R, and decided to hit the hay early. We had a long day ahead of us the next day to Granby, Colorado. You're working out tonight? Yeah. You're really gonna work out tonight? Absolutely, dude. No days off, brother. Dang, dude. There's a fitness center here. See, guys, that's dedication right there. Yeah. No days this, off. Let all this hard work go to waste. Go Even on the road. I'm going to walk around town myself. Uh, again, kind, uh, kind of no days off. I'm kind of a The family just split, yeah. Good morning, guys. Starting off day two here in beautiful St. George, Utah. Uh, it's probably only about 85 at this point, so haven't hit the scorching temperatures yet. I'm hoping to kind of get out of town before it really gets super hot. Last night, uh, Stefan had some incredible growth overnight. What is that? Good morning, Stefan. Good morning, you? fine. You, you looking forward to today's activities? Yes, looking really forward to, uh, and a warning for all other viewers, don't get too close during the night to Matt. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. It just feels different when I woke up today. Uh, can you explain the growth? Uh, the mustache growth overnight as well or uh yeah that was part of i was scared to join the late law crew without growing a mustache and i'm not able to grow one sorry for that so i had to take other preventive measures otherwise they wouldn't expel me from the group gotta look the part i guess i don't know I think we're ahead up to Beavers, our first stop. We're meeting up with my cousin Daniel in Green River, Utah. He's headed from the Salt Lake area. So uh, yeah, we got about 550, 570 miles today, something like that. We're stopping in Granby, Colorado for the night. We didn't want to do Denver tonight just because we didn't want to deal with like the city traffic and everything. So we're kind of keeping it like a little bit more remote. Uh, so Granby, looks like there's some cool mountain roads off in that area as well. So yeah, we'll see how day two goes. I think you're gonna lose the mustache on the road. I hope not. Uh, maybe it tends to move to an eyebrow or... <laughs> <laughs> we, we will see, we will see. <laughs> we will see. boots yesterday the sole came out tell us a quick story quick. well i've had those boots for a while they've kind of already been falling apart which is disappointing because they weren't cheap and uh i thought they were good road boots and they fell apart in the heat so i tossed them last night and i was kind of bummed about it but freed up a lot of space and i found these bad boys yeah that's a score right there
Beaver, Utah. And I gotta say, I do love me some beaver. I love Where are we, Mr. President Bush? We're in town of Beaver. Beaver, Utah. He's been talking like Bush this whole time. Bush, Bush Jr. Yeah, that's W. Get it right. What's up, Matt? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just Visual checking. inspections? Yeah. Just checking it out. Good. We're looking good. That's a bolt. And it's hot now. <laughs> We're at about 6,000 feet right now. Such a refreshing day compared to yesterday. 120 degrees yesterday, so it's about 80, 85 right now up here, which was super nice. Probably next stop, Green River, meet up with Daniel. This ride just gets so much better once you get north of like Vegas and St. George. It just like opens up, super fast highway. Scenery is awesome. I just found a $2 bill. You on the ground? I'm four. I don't know good if luck. it's good luck or bad luck. That's very good luck. That means you're gonna have a good trip in Sturgis. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to that. Still on there? Yeah. And I got a nice, yeah. suitable <laughs> Dude, nutrition. Look at that. S -word, man. <laughs> it does suit you very yeah. well. But it's just for mustache wearers, so no for the non bearded guys. Yeah, only musta us mustache wearers can eat no that. Yeah. Eliminated that. Fix it, Andrew. Fix it. I'm trying to, man. I'm doing what I can. Andrew's trying to fix the car, but no luck so far. Pretty sure it's a fuel pump issue. So, yeah, I don't know if we have any luck here. So after we left Beaver, Utah, we would continue north on I-15, then we'd hang a right on the 70 East, take the 70 East through Richfield, and then we'd continue to a little town called Salina where we would make a pit stop, grab some gas, then we would continue on the 70 East, we would take that into Green River, Utah, where we would meet up with Daniel, my cousin. Stopping off for another little gas stop. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get that girl back on the road on her car. Andrew was kind of giving it his best effort, but we think that she had a fuel system issue, like a fuel pump issue or something like that. So she's got to wait it out. Andrew gave her a bunch of money though to like hang out and maybe get a hotel room or something like that. So Andrew's got a big heart. I gotta hand it to him. Really good dude. So as we took the Interstate 70 East, we dropped in elevation quite a bit from Salinas down into Green River. And with that elevation drop, we made a serious scenery change as well. We went from the Alpine mountainous area, gained a lot of heat, which isn't really what we were looking for, but we traded the Alpines in for the Red Rock formations. All the bluffs and the plateaus spanning the horizon, it definitely gave me that Southern Utah feel with a little bit of a Colorado twist to it. Right before we got into Green River, we went through some amazing canyons. We had these large high-speed highways cut right in to the mountain range, some awesome bridges we crossed, and just that stereotypical Western United States cowboy feel.
got Matt Laidlaw here, the whole Laidlaw's Harley Davidson crew, plus some. Yep, yeah, excited for the ride, definitely. We got a good crew, we got what, like six people or so? We got six now, we're gonna be adding some along the way, maybe adding a few more once we get out to Sturgis. Hold up, and uh, cousin Daniel is here, so Daniel's officially joining the crew now. Made it. Made it with the crew. He's on the street glide. Came down from uh, Salt Lake City, so we're gonna head east now and go into Granby, Colorado. It's like 105 outside right now, so yeah, push through it. Hopefully it cools down pretty soon. After Green River, we continue to follow the 70 east and take it into Colorado. We'd go through Grand Junction, go up along the 70. This is a beautiful highway, by the way. Go through Rifle, Newcastle. A lot of this highway as well, like follows the Colorado River. It's absolutely gorgeous. And we would take that past Eagle and then we would get off on the 131 and head north here. Never tell me you're getting an Indian next time, dude. That's what yeah, you Yeah, sorry, man. man. Uh, Never yeah. say you're getting an Indian, yeah. man. Dude, I, I, that one looked kind of sharp that we just passed, though. <laughs> I know we no. passed one. I know you liked it, but I know. you're sticking to a Harley, man. Yeah, okay. Right. Sorry, man. It'll never happen again, I promise. <laughs> Actually, man, I could kick my ass, so no. <laughs> it's a cool 107 out right now. I'm hoping uh, it cools off here real quick. Some room for your helmet. Oh, freaking hack, dude. It's good. It's really, Life hack. Really nice to put on. <laughs> I love you. Daniel? Which, there's room for one you more if you still want to go to Is that the Daddy Buttcheeks hat? You, you love him? Yes, sir. I do love you. Oh, okay. I, love, I love Andrew. I love you too, though. Oh, thanks, man. We're good. Thanks, dude. Yeah, yeah bro. Huh? It's gonna oh, yeah. be really refreshing. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. That's a road trip hack number one for you guys, all right? Helmets in the ice cooler. Excuse me? Beer if, if you can't find the beer caves. True. Yeah. Next best thing. All right, we're checking out Teddy Morris's Harley Davidson here. Well, they got a free Sturgis park in there. After leaving Grand Junction, Colorado and heading east on the 70, I had what was probably the biggest surprise of the entire trip. This stretch of highway all the way until we turned off to head north into Granby was absolutely breathtaking. And usually the motorcycle world tends to avoid the main interstates if they really want to find the good stuff. But in this case, on a main vein through the middle of Colorado, the scenery could not get any better. Paralleling the Colorado River, riding right at the foot of amazing mountains, the amazing tunnels we went through, I think these these highways were built with the motorcyclist in mind. It's true
heading to Granby. Our next stop is uh, our final resting location. So we're going to uh, eat some dinner tonight, hopefully. And uh, yeah, this part of Colorado is awesome, by the way. taking the 70 right next to the river the Colorado River uh, and dude it was it was beautiful like right after you get east of Grand Junction and you're headed out on the 70 it's two-lane highway high speed right next to the Colorado River like it was super epic never done this road on a motorcycle never done it period but yeah if you're headed to Sturgis and you can use the 70 to get out there it's a pretty dang good route I think one of the main goals of every motorcyclist is to find and travel to the most epic scenic roads possible. Of course there is one ingredient that can make the most scenic, picturesque roads in the world even that much better. And that ingredient is if you're riding into the sunset as you go over those roads. We just got off uh, the 131 here, so we're gonna be heading up into Granby. So we just exited off of the, the Highway 70. But oh my gosh, I was not expecting that today. That was such a rad road. I put 100% on the Lexus. Shut up. Dude, that road, man, the 70, that was sick, dude. Are we done with the 70? That was intense. Uh, I don't think we're gonna pick it back up tomorrow. No highway is more scenic than that one. Dude, no. Like main highway. Yeah, a main interstate. Like, that was so awesome. Yeah, like, I mean, can you imagine the construction? Like, they built the, the westbound lanes up above the eastbound <laughs> lanes. It's so cool. It's like, that was so rad. I got that whole, like, Dude, stretch. I can't wait to see your footage. It's, it, it's a long, like. Long clip? Yeah, it's a long clip. Hey, it's all good, man. I think this is my air my air filters might be spraying a little oil on the edge a little bit. Oh my mine's spraying all over my bike. Oh okay. Yeah, that's normal. Because dude, we're riding them hard. Yeah, check that out. Oh, yeah, because I'm there, I have like just little dots sometimes right here and here. Yeah, it's just it's just blow by. Yeah. I got I mean I got it up here too. Oh shit. Yeah man. You wanted the white bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything shows up. Here's where I probably didn't do my due diligence in doing enough research, but we'll go through here. Then we would get off at a little road, looks like a one called Trough Road and take that. That quickly turned into a dirt road, much to our surprise, added a little adventure to the whole trip, if you know what I mean. Take that one up here, very scenic and beautiful though. We continue to follow that road all the way up in the dirt, all the way into Kremling. Then we headed east on the 40. Things got kind of dark by the time we got up to the 40. And we took that, followed that all the way in and got into Granby, Colorado for the night.
The route that we were taking is now turning into dirt. So we're taking a dirt road over a mountain pass, I guess. So we're just gonna send it and do what we can. So hopefully, uh, hopefully no one falls. Should have brought the Pan Americas, huh? I guess. Oh, here we go. I had no idea this, this road was dirt. How far is this dirt road? Is it all dirt all the way? Yeah, it's called Trough Road. It goes all the way to Crab Lane, pretty much. We're, we're going to Granby tonight. Yeah, we can go this way. Yeah, I just I'd take it slow. There are sections that are paved. Oh, really? There's eight, there's eight, like maybe a half mile section. That's great. This is dirt road, corrugated, it sucks, and then like you go through the hills for a minute, it's not that bad, like it's washed forty, and then it becomes like hard packed dirt, and then there's a tiny paved section that there's like you know, a tight mountain pass, and then um, there's more back to hard pack. Back down the way we came up? I guess so. Uh... I'll be like 24? 24. 24 miles on this? Yeah, that's the whole, so 24 minus like, they said like eight. It's a terrible spot. Yeah. Terrible. Oh. Just up the road, there's a pull on. Okay. okay. Thank you. Top of the hill. Right. Oh. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, she's the girlfriend from the other guy we met at the gas station. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, this is a terrible spot to park. What do you think? Best, best. So is this the only way to. Uh... <laughs> it's just the banter, right, you know? So it's, it's, 20, it's 24 miles to get to. With, with patches of uh, paved road, yeah. but it's not till a while, until the very end. Do you guys just want to take it real slow and just do it? Yeah. Let's just go. Let's just take it slow. It's just yeah. dirty. Nine o'clock at night, small town, not too many places are open. We found uh, the Grand Azteca Mexican restaurant, so we're gonna check it out here. Thanks for dinner, Stephen. 
appreciate it, man. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.